सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुली and that needs your support i appeal to you to take a subscription to the print you can find the link in the description below flags covered the skies and drums thundered as they would on a tiger hunt as the army of the arakan marched into the jungles great ranks of infantry backed by hundreds of battle elephants tens of thousands of boats stood by to help the army jump over the dense veins of rivers that separated the mountains from the plains king shri sudhama raja the very image of virtue and in prowess like the morning sun gushed a court chronicler was hunting for human prey this weekend king william alexander of the netherlands formally apologized for the role of the dynasty of orange nassau in enabling the slave trade in the indian ocean region the dutch east india company slave traders the king said had turned individuals into commodities a kind of oppression that he said was and i quote the most hurtful the most humiliating the most degrading earlier this year a historical investigation commissioned by the dutch parliament showed that the royal house had directly earned at least 500 million euros in today's money from the slave trade and here's the strange part of the story the dutch apology for slavery involved indians but hardly a word has been said about this in our own country like so many painful colonial memories the story of the indian ocean slave trade which saw untold numbers of indians being trafficked from malabar the coromandel coast and bengal to the dutch east india company outpost at batavia in indonesia has been obliterated from our memories king william alexander's apology should push india to honor the victims and to acknowledge the role of other indians in causing untold suffering to generations of our people even though emperor jalaluddin muhammad akbar akbar the great to us had ordered the mughal empire slaves to be set free in 1582 that centuries before the united kingdom followed suit in 1838 trafficking in humans continued across india tens of thousands of enslaved indians were purchased by the dutch east india company kidnapped from bengal and the coromandel coast by pirates mercenaries and the town new rulers of arakan among others the historian marcus wink has shown the indian ocean slave trade relied on three interlocking circles of trafficking an african circuit which ran from the east african coast through madagascar and mauritius a middle circuit which ran from malabar to the coromandel and bengal and a southeast asian circuit which involved malaysia indonesia irian jaya and the southern philippines From the work of historian Ishrat Amin who's among the few chroniclers of the Indian Ocean slave trade we gain a sense of the savagery it involved after the Arakan king's successful raid on Bengal in 1624 the Dutch East India Company had dispatched the frigates Yeager and Mize along with a yacht to purchase at least 1000 of the 10000 captives who were reputed to have been taken the bulk of the slaves though turned out had died in an epidemic during their forced march and just 93 were available for sale in 1643 dutch east india company chief aaron van delhelm obtained a license from the arakan king allowing freedom to the company to purchase gum indigo white cotton cloth rice and human beings that year the company bought 600 slaves out of which 135 died of smallpox while held in ships on their way to batavia the same year 
Dutch East India Company ships trawled the Cochin coast looking for slaves captured in the wars in Bijapur, following devastating fighting and famine in Nagapatnam in 1660. The crews of the ships Walwis Bay and Ulysses were able to find hundreds of enslaved people for sale. Later in the century, rates were fixed. Men aged 20 to 36 sold for 12 and a half riyals, women from 12 to 25 for 8 riyals, boys from 8 to 19 for 7 and a half riyals, girls from 7 to 12 for 6 riyals, and smaller children for 3 and a half riyals. Even younger children were accepted by the slave buyers, but without payment because of the high mortality rate. The price of an adult male slave, just to give you some context, was about a third of that of a ton of rice. The Indian slaves were used for cultivating mace, the spice, on the island of Ai, though it lacked drinking water. In Banda, the slaves were used to prepare fallow lands for cultivation, and in Batavia, they dug canals and drainage. Each slave governor general Gerard Rejant smugly observed could do twice the work of a dutch worker in the heat and at no cost like other colonial powers the dutch east india company operated in a country where slavery was already deeply embedded in economic life every great military campaign in medieval northern india the historian shada banu has recorded led markets to fill with slaves for sale No day goes the chronicler Shehabuddin al-Umari recorded during Alauddin Khilji's rule from 1296 to 1396 without the sale of thousands of slaves. A slave girl in Delhi cost 8 tankas and those fit for service as well as concubinage 15 tankas. Following the defeat of the emperor Shah Jahan's forces at Balkh in 1646-1647, his unfortunate soldiers ended up as slaves. In 1589 records show that a healthy male Indian slave had sold in Samarkand for 225 tankas but after the defeat the price fell as low as 84 tankas Emperor Zahiruddin Babur's memoirs record that down to Kabul come every year 7 8 or 10000 horses and up to it from Hindustan come every year caravans of 10 15 or 20000 heads of houses bringing slaves white cloth sugar candy refined and common sugar and aromatic roots in early modern central asia the historian scott levi writes virtually every affluent household included several slaves to look after its affairs and maintain the garden and large numbers of slaves were used to cultivate the land In the late 1600s for example the nobleman Sheikh Khwaja Said was reported to have 1000 slaves of Indian Kalmak and Russian origin few of the stories of these slaves have survived Minhaj Siraj who in 1269 traveled from Delhi to Multan with slaves to send as a present for his sister in Afghanistan we have someone called Hindu Khan a Mathura native purchased by the Persian merchant Fakhruddin Safahani Sumbal the Indian who served in the court of Constantinople but nothing about their lives East India Company intelligence officer Mohanlal Kashmiri on an undercover expedition in Bukhara saw Indians and Jews being ill treated but not sold as slaves as none bought them regarding them as base and unpurified His superior Arthur Connolly visited the slave market at Kulam and watched men bargaining for a very beautiful persian girl so beautiful he writes i beg to state i have not seen the like of her a neck a cubit long eyes as large as a cup her tears fell like the rain in the spring and she was altogether so lost in grief that she seemed bereft of her senses likely the lack of reckoning in india with the slave trade so different from the debates we've seen happening in europe and the united states has something to do with how enmeshed the practice was with the lives of indian elites following on from emperor akbar muhyiddin muhammad aurangzeb made energetic efforts to stop the export of slaves realizing that it hurt the domestic labor market from the 18th century on the numbers of indian slaves in central asia dropped off with iranians making up the bulk of the slave population along with russians inside india though 
Slavery continued to be endemic. The historian Shumit Guha records the Peshwa ruler Balaji Baji Rao warning an aide in 1743. I quote, You are instructed to buy and send me two beautiful 10-year-old girls. Despite this, you have not sent them. Let this suffice as a reminder. In another letter, Baji Rao thanks a Jayappa Desai for the gift of a European musical instrument and two women of the best quality. In 1801, Historian Barker Udea tells us, British colonial administrators estimated that the southern plantations of Canara had 52,022 slaves working on them out of a total worker population of 396,000. Prices for men ranged from 12 paise to 26 paise, for women from 10 paise to 24 paise, and for a child, just 8 paise. Historian Mukesh Kumar has found that well into the 19th century, the districts of Bihar and Patna were home to 56,370 slaves, with children under 7 years old selling for 10 rupees and 15 to 30 year olds for 50 rupees. In times of famine though, prices drop sharply, all the way to just 12 annas, with families willing to sell their children or starving people willing to sell themselves. In a 1983 report, the print's editor-in-chief Shekhar Gupta discovered slavery remained endemic in parts of Arunachal Pradesh. Legal abolition, we all know, has not succeeded in ending despicable practices like debt bondage in many parts of the country, even today. To accept King William Alexander's apology, Indians will have to face up to the painful truth of our own ancestors' collaboration with and participation in a colossal industry of servitude. The time for that reckoning, though, is long overdue. I'm Praveen Swami, and I'm National Security Editor of The Print. Thank you for watching Security Code again today.